Hello, everybody. Welcome, and uh, thanks for your time. Uh, my name is Rodrigo Sicarelli, and I'll be sharing our journey towards shared code using CanP. First, let me introduce myself. I'm from Sao Paulo, Brazil. have been working with Android since 2011, and with KMP since 2021. I'm currently a staff software engineer and a part of the mobile platform team. Before we dive in, I would like to give you a, a little more context about Stone. So we aim to be the best friend of Brazilian entrepreneurs, not only providing payment solutions, but also credit, um, investments, loans, and so on. Uh, we have four, over 4.3 million users. Uh, last quarter, we processed over $24 billion in payments. We have 140 um, mobile devs, and we have 1.3 million like, caught in lines of code. And we have two applications. Uh, the one on the left is the Tone app, and the, the one on the right is the Stone app. And each of these applications, they are meant for specific user segments, and they are built using different technologies. So the Tone app is built using React Native with its own core modules, and it's built in the UI using TypeScript. And the Stone app is meant for the small and medium business, or SMBs, with two different HEPOs, one in Kotlin and another with Swift, with its own core modules. Uh, on Android, was built using Compose and XML, and on iOS, using UIKit. And after a while, we realized that most of the features between these three applications, they were the same. Actually, over 75% of the features uh, were the same. And it took us, on average, two months to deliver a single feature for all these applications. And that was very bad for us, because we are not only having all the costs of building the same thing over and over, but we are actually delaying the revenue opportunities by not accessing all our client base in a, in a, in a time being. Uh, so with that, we decided to do a platformization, not only on the mobile side, but also on the back end and the website. And from that, we built a mobile platform tribe, which is composed into four different teams. The tooling team, which is responsible for all the compilations, uh, Kotlin updates, React Native updates, Xcode updates, and so on. We have the core team, which is responsible for diagnostic modules that are used uh, across the features. The experience team, which is uh, the, um, responsible for the design system, and the QA team, which is responsible for the releases and propagate the culture, uh, the quality culture at the organization. And our goal was to streamline the efficient multi-platform development, ensure quality, reducing the costs of serving our customers. And with our tribe in place, we did a very deep tech assessment. We hired a third-party company to do an unbiased assessment about, about our code base. And we started collecting a lot of metrics about our repositories, like the Dora metrics, which uh, tracks the delivery ability KPIs, also the module reusage, so how much of the code that we currently have could be shared, the project maturity, like the, the build time, uh, quality, INRs, uh, and so on, the coupling as well, so how much the couple, the, the module, or so then we could you know, reuse across other features. The migration effort to introduce a new technology, and of course our team skills on how can could um, use this new technology. And our goal was not to you know reinvent the wheel, so we want to maximize the assets that we already have, and not to adopt something completely new, like the complete effect of our code base. So that mindset was very important for us to deciding which technology we should pursue. And this is a table about our specific use case. Um, I put a, a remark down there because it's our uh, currently scenario. And we map a lot of uh, items like code reusability, market adoption, mobile team knowledge, learning interest, iOS knowledge needed, technology maturity, and pioneer status. And as you can see, for a specific case, KNP, KNP really stands out uh, based on all our metrics. And after we run lots of POCs, we were pretty much convinced that the KMP was the way to go, and we decided to use this technology at our organization. And from that, we start layering our platform, which is composed into three main uh, pillars, let's say. The very first one are the Storm Gradle plugins, which are a bunch of plugins that we use for not only maintaining our uh, mo modules, but also releasing the apps, uh, controlling the versioning, and other types of tooling. We also have the core part, which are a bunch of you know, agnostic modules that are uh, generic, that we could use any, on any application. Some of them are the network, navigation, content, UI model, logger, session, 
and we have a total of 63 core modules. And the last but not least, we have our design system, uh, which we have both on Compose and on SwiftUI, and uh, it's used across all our features. And two, um, our efforts generated two open source projects that you might know. The very first one is Voyager, which is a navigation library for Compose multi-platform and also Lyricist, uh, which is an internationalization and localization library for composing multi-platform. And it's hosted on the, on the Adriel uh, repository, which is one of the minds behind our design system. And from that, we start adopting uh, KMP, and this is how it looks like today. As you can see, we built the future only once in Kotlin. Um, we leverage our platform and we share the code between these two main applications. Uh, on Android, we are using Compose multi-platform, and on iOS, we're using SwiftUI, but spoiler alert, we already have Compose multi-platform features. And we uh, have over 61% of our code being shared on the Stone app, actually increases 5% from the, ta the ta talk's title. Uh, on the React Native app, we have 35%. We have over 120 uh, KLibs, which is a central part of our integration, and we have over 400 mod Gradle modules that compose all these repositories. And that's how we are currently integrating KMP into our different repositories. So all our KMP code is living into the Android application. Uh, each feature team, they have their own KLibs, which is versionized, which allow them to move forward independently without stepping into each other's toes. We publish those KLibs to a Maven repository, and on the iOS side, we have an elephant in the room, which is a Gradle Interrupt project, which builds the XC framework integrate into the build phases on the iOS site um, and use the RCMP on Swift. And then to integrate that into the React Native app, we have a manual zip generation with source code files that we integrated into the iOS project on the Tone app. And on the Android side, we have regular publications for Android. And we use native components from React Native to show um, all our CAMP features. Um, and you might be wondering how we trained all these developers to adopt KMP. So our, pro our approach here was not to dictate how they would organize themselves, like who do the Kotlin code, who does the, the other part of code, but rather we invested more on training and uh, facilitating uh, the people to learn more. So we have three main pillars. The very first one are the learning tracks. So our bunch of you know, huge confluence pages with classes, books, videos, lots of Kotlin conf videos in there. Uh, we have a very strong inner community, so we do lots of pair programming, we have very rich documentation, support, and of course, lots of inner talks. And we also have a hands-on approach where developers build their own projects, uh, especially when new developers come. They have a special project that uses our technology. And of course, we have a study found uh, that the company offer money or, and budget for developers to you know, buy classes and, 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 and teach, learn more about CAMP, CMP, and so on. And this is our developed productivity. So this is a very interesting graphic. We see our productivity number going down, which is good, especially the PR time to change, which is the time where the dev start coding until the time the PR is merged. And it went down. But at the same time, as we can see on the total number of PRs, it start growing. So this is a very interesting. Like we are building more pull requests, opening more pull requests. It's taking less time to build. And it's you know, boosting the developer productivity. And this is a graphic about our lines of code on each of these technologies. As you can see, more Kotlin code, more productive the developers are. And at the same time, we went down with Swift and TypeScript. We have a slightly increase on the TypeScript, but we are on the way to decreasing that. But this is interesting because it's totally related with our developer productivity. And yes, just yesterday, I saw that Google mentioned our case at uh, Android Developers Blog, so thank you very much about that, highlighting that we are, on average, 40% faster to build the features on both Android and iOS, which is amazing. Um, of course, not everything is flowers. Um, we have a bunch of frictions with KMP right now. I selected the three main of them. Um, the very first one are the build times. So XC framework release builds are very slow. It takes on average two hours to compile, only the release for iOS device. So this is very huge for us. Uh, the Kotlin 2.1, it has a new linker and also an update from L to LLVM 16. 
and it got an hour from that, so we are under 100, uh, one hour and 15 minutes right now, but it still lags, you know, one hour and 15 minutes to build and to release the app is quite a lot, so we are working closely with Google and JetBrains to address that. And we also have uh, lots of CI costs, so all our K-Libs, um, they rely on macOS to be published, and macOS runners are quite expensive. Kotlin 2.1 uh, unlocks cross-compilation, so we are very excited for that, but we are not there yet, so we are in the progress of updating to Kotlin 2.1. And the last but not least, the best practice is very challenging, because suddenly you have Swift developers working with Kotlin, and Swift developers, they have their own way of writing code, and also JavaScript and TypeScript developers, they have their own way of writing code. And being idiomatic to Kotlin is very challenging, like building the Kotlin way. So we are getting there. And of course, the improper usage of the hidden from Objective-C annotation, this is very challenging because we found a direct impact of the missing of these annotations with the linking time. So if we use these annotations properly, our build times on the XC framework went down. Actually build a link just for that, and we are planning to open source it very soon, so stay tuned. And it really helps us to have a governance on the exposed Kotlin code to Swift. What's next? So our vision is to have one, only one app. So all these integrations between uh, repositories, they are very challenging. So we are aiming to have a single application or single repository, which is user segment aware, meaning that when a user logs in and they are self-employed, for instance, the app will change based on the user. Uh, and we, our goal is to use Compose Emote Platform for building the features. We already have two big journeys using Compose Emote Platform. And on this quarter, we start pushing Compose Emote Platform to other things as well. So they're starting adopting, and this is the way to go. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, thanks a lot. I'm just here representing a bunch of you know, passionate developers. We have a long journey with KMP. So if you have any questions, any you know, scalability challenges, any concerns about scaling KMP, I'm here to help. Uh, so please reach out into my socials. I also write about KMP on my dev.2. It's all in Portuguese, but you can use the translator. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So if you want to see me again next year, please don't forget to vote, okay? <laughs>